Hey guys, my name is Edgar Perez, and my presentation today is on soilless farming. I chose this topic because I found it rather interesting to find out that there are actually other ways to grow vegetables other than simply planting them in the ground. As someone who grew up on a small farm, that's the only way I've ever known it done, and I've seen that it worked, so I didn't think there was any other ways to do so. But after a bit of research, I found these two different systems that use pure water, and some that even use other, other living creatures in it, which I found rather interesting. Um, it, I found out it's a great way to to grow vegetables not only for yourself, you can also grow them for communities, you can grow bigger vegetables, you can get more of them, and you could even grow them at, at different times of the year. It doesn't have to be a specific season. Uh, the two systems I found were hydroponics and aquaponics, and we will be getting into those. But first, let's talk a little bit about the differences between traditional and soilless farming. All right, let's get to it. When it comes to traditional farming, we usually think of something that requires some kind of land, either a backyard, a garden, maybe even just a, a window box for your for your windowsill to grow some, some plants in. Um, it usually uses water purely for irrigation purposes. Uh, plants need water, obviously. Um, the nutrients are supplied by the soil, either with present nutrients already in there from the organic matter or even from fertilizer that gets added in by the grower themselves and of course they need sunlight. Now when it comes to soilless uh, farming it's a little different. They can actually be grown in a PVC pipe, a plastic tub, or even just a five gallon bucket that you could find at any hardware store which I found rather interesting. They use different types of medium to hold in the plant and when I say medium I just mean literally what holds it in place because the, the plant doesn't just float there on its own. I've seen people use hardened clay pellets, lava rocks, washed gravel. It all depends on the grower and what they decide to use. And the nutrients are also supplied by the grower through the water. Um, like I mentioned before, there, I, I learned about two systems, hydroponics and aquaponics, and we're going to get into them, learn a little more about them, and then talk about their pros and cons. All right, let's start off with the hydroponic system. Here you can see I have a simple, simple simple diagram of a hydroponic system, nothing too advanced. You have a grow tray, a reservoir, an air pump, and an air stone, where in the bottom reservoir you would add your nutrients. And from there they are pumped up into the grow tray where the plants are hanging their roots will absorb the water and the nutrients through the roots and then the water returns back into the reservoir. Uh, the air pump and the air stone is simply there to add oxygen to the water so it is constantly oxygenated. Um, liquid nutrients are usually used because, as you can see, um, they require the water to go through a pump, and if we use anything besides the liquid, it would mess up the pump, and that would be more troublesome than not. Uh, something interesting I found is that these can actually be grown indoors, and a lot of the times they are. Um, people grow vegetables during the winter using systems like these. They grow bright, bright red of tomatoes, lettuce, whatever you could think of. In, in the dead of winter, when there's snow outside, because they have a small room, with a special light system that can be adjusted to control the environment and they can accustom it to however they want their plants to grow. Now aquaponics is a bit more complicated as, as it is more of a living system. As you can see in the diagram that I have here there is a fish tank and actually it is the fish's waste that is used as a nutrient for these plants as opposed to adding your own liquid nutrients that you buy commercially. Um, the fish's waste gets converted into the nutrients by getting pumped and filtered up to the plants where they absorb anything anything that they require, anything bad. Also, it helps clean up the water for the fish, and then that is pumped right back to them. You do need to feed the fish, obviously. They do need food. They can't just leave them in there. But it is, it is a very interesting system. Um, I've seen these both used indoor and outdoor. People will build big plastic tubs to hold their fish in and have the system inside a building, maybe a greenhouse. Or even places like such as Vietnam have these for their communities. So by the time the fish grow up and the plants are grown, the entire community has a steady supply of food, both fish and vegetables. And I found that very interesting. And now finally, before you decide to go start your own soilless farming system, let's look at some of the pros and cons. While yes, you can have an increased yield and size of crop, you can get food all year round, including in the winter time if you have a certain area for your system. And it allows for a diversity of different vegetables you can grow. You need to consider there is a big margin for error. You can easily mess this up and end up killing your crops if you don't know what you are doing. 
it can be very expensive if you are new and you're buying a brand new system or deciding to build your own it can end up being expensive depending on how much you have and what you can supply yourself with and it does require some space not as much as say a garden but it does require some space for you to put your system in there are smaller systems out there available and you can always customize it to your very liking it's all up to you I hope you guys found this as enjoyable and interesting as I did, and I hope maybe one day some of you will start your own systems. Thank you for your time.